So, the question is, where do we go from here? Well, I guess the next thing to do is to do the thing that I originally thought I wanted to avoid. And that is, we are basically, uh, we've got our cube map. And it's rendered in all these different directions. What we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna do the original type of rendering where we store the depth as the actual Z depth from each of these projection uh, directions here. So the Z in this direction, the Z in this direction, so on and so forth. We're gonna store it as usual. So this is gonna be our initial kind of rendering that we had before. And then when it's time to do the lookup, we're gonna have our point. In the uh, in the space of the camera basically we're gonna have our sampling vector and what we're gonna do is we are going to determine we're gonna do some processing to determine which face this vector is going through and then once we know the face we can choose we know the direction that was used to project this face and then we can use that projection direction to basically find this depth in this direction. So essentially, we are using the result of this test to choose a projection, and then we're going to project this point to get this uh, depth here. All right, now that sounds like a lot of work. It sounds like a lot of extra processing, especially since the, the actual sampling of the cube map we'll have to do this processing. So we're basically going to have to do this processing twice, which is one of the reasons why I kind of wanted to avoid it. But I figure, you know what? Instead of just, you know, worrying about it, let's try it and let's see how it is. And if it ain't so bad, then, you know, it could be viable. You won't really know until you actually try. You can only sort of guess. So when I actually tried, my first thing, my first problem was, okay, so how, given this sampling vector, how do I determine which face? And this actually turned out to be very easy once I thought about it for a while. Because, first of all, in the general case, this would be a little more difficult. But remember, our cube map is perfectly aligned to the x, y, z axes. So because it's perfectly aligned, this makes it makes this very simple. Basically, uh, if you take any kind of vector, Let's take a different color here so it's easier. This vector. And we're just going to look in the X and the Y, right? So this has an X component and a Y component. Which one is longer? The X component. So, it is because the X component is bigger, it is going to be in one of these faces. One of these faces that are offset in the X direction. It's not going to be the top or the bottom. If we have one where the Y is bigger than the X, then it's going to be a top or bottom. Very easy. And then, if, let's say, we determine the x is longer, okay, is it positive or is it negative? If the x is the bigger one and it's negative, it's going to be this face. If it's positive, it's going to be this face. And there you go. So, that is how you determine which face, which isn't that complicated. That's not a really um, expensive operation. Although it does, it will incur some branching. But, because of the way that this works, most of the pixels that are close to each other will resolve to the same face, and so the branching will not be expensive. We can say in this case, branches will be mostly uh, convergent. Now the second question is, okay, so once we figure out which face we're dealing with, what do we do? Well, each face has a projection associated with it. That's the projection that was used to render the scene to that uh, shadow map. So, we will basically figure out which face we're in, and then we will use that to look up into, uh, you know, basically an array of um, projection matrices. And so once we find, okay, this is our face, this is our projection matrix, we apply that projection matrix to this point, and that gives us its X and Y coordinates, and it gives us its depth on this uh, shadow map. And there you go. So then we have to do a match. We have to select based on which face we find. We have to select one of these um, projection matrices and then project this point. And then we get the depth. 
from here that we can compare. We get, we get the depth of this point projected, and we can compare that with the depth that was stored in the uh, texture. And we look up into that texture. And then that's how we do our depth. Uh, that's how we do our shadowing calculation. Very good. Now, we can actually realize some things that will make this a lot less complicated and a lot uh, more performant than what I've shown here. This is the general case. But now let's think about it. Okay, first of all, first things first. Our sampling is in a cube texture. So all we need is this vector, which means we don't need the x, y from this projection. That's not necessary. Not necessary at all. All we need is the depth. So instead of having to perform this vector matrix, all we really need to do is take this distance, which is a distance in one of the ordinal directions, one of our, you know, x, y, z directions, a very simple calculation, uh, that would just be, in this case, that would just be the x coordinate of this. We take that and we got to multiply it by a coefficient. So it would be x times, basically, you know, c0 times x plus c1, where these are coefficients that come out of this matrix. So instead of having to store an entire matrix, we just need these coefficients. For this case here, we would take the x, we do this, and that would give us the depth directly. So, if our view point here, our point in the, basically in the, uh, in the light space is here, we got a vector like this, it chooses this face, which means we have to take x and plug it into this to get the depth. If it were here, we would be choosing this face, which means we would have to plug negative x into this equation. If it were here, we'd have to plug y into this equation. If it were here, we'd have to plug negative y into this equation. So, selecting the face, instead of using that to select into these matrices, we just use that to select, okay, which component of our vector here are we going to use to calculate the depth? x, y, or z you know, in a three-dimensional case. That's already simpler, but it gets even simpler because we don't need a switch or a if, else, or whatever to select this. We don't have to do any of that. We can do it branchless. Here's what you do. The largest coordinate determines which face. Which face determines which coordinate we're taking. They're both intertwined. So you actually, it's just the largest coordinate is the one that will be plugged into here. So all you gotta do is out of x, y, and z, uh, you take the absolute value of these guys and the maximum of these three, you plug it into this equation and you're good to go. That's it. This gives you your, um, basically your, your distance here mapped to, you know, the zero to one depth range. And I believe you also have to divide by W or maybe divide by Z or something like that. But basically, that's it. There's no branching involved. You absolute value each of your components and then you just take the biggest one and you plug that into your projection equation and you have your projected depth in the correct direction for that face of the cube map. Isn't that freaking beautiful? Now, we have to figure out what C0 and C1 are, and it's not that complicated at all. I mean, it's, nah, it's not that complicated at all. If you understand what a, how to look at a matrix, which, you know, if you're doing 3D stuff at this point, and you still don't know how to interpret a matrix, you, you're, putting the court, you're putting the cart before the horse. So, I mean, this information is everywhere, but if you look, for example, at the documentation for this uh, Microsoft function for generating a perspective matrix, you'll see here is in the remarks, we have a little diagram here, and we see basically this column, this column here, this is what is going to be generating Z in the output, right? And this is the, going to be multiplied by Z, and this part here is going to be multiplied by 1, and they're going to be added together. So we have the far plane, far plane, near plane, near, far, near, far. So these are just, uh, C1 and C0 are just functions of z far plane and near plane. So if we look at this commit here, um, we have our pixel shader for our shadow lookup. 
So we see Z far, and I'm just, I'm hard coding these values right now for my testing purposes. Eventually, you're going to have to have something. You're either going to have to have a uh, dynamic shader compiler that compiles things at runtime and that uh, temp it can be templated on these values. But more usefully, probably you want to have these um, piped in uh, in a constant buffer. So Z far, Z near. So C1 is Z far over Z far minus Z near. And C2 or C0 is you know negative Z near. This just these, these are just the things I showed you in that matrix, right? And then when we want to calculate the shadow depth, given a um, shadow position, basically a view position relative to the light source. First, we take the absolute value of x, y, z, and then we want to take the maximum between z, y, and x. We multiply that by c1, we add c0, and then we divide by the z. This is a mistake, we'll see that in a second. But this does give us something very close. So, then we're going to use that, we compare that with whatever is in the, uh, the shadow map. And there you go, Bob's your uncle. For the vertex shader, now we don't have to do any bullshit in here. We just multiply model view projection and Bob's your uncle. And then in here, again, we can use our standard shadow rasterizer with a small amount of uh, constant bias. Slope scale factor two, a small clamping just for, I don't know, just because I feel like it would be nice. And again, now we can render to a depth. Well, now we have to render to a depth stencil, not to a uh, an actual render target, right? Because we're passing in all our pipeline through the uh, the depth, the rasterizer depth, and that's what enables us to do the uh, the slope scale depth biasing gets rendered to a depth stencil texture, and then that is bound as an input for when we do our no normal rasterizing. That's what this is looking into. So, there you have it. All the good stuff. Everything sort of just, it's basically just restored back to the way it was before, more or less. And now we see, okay, well, it looks wrong. I mean, it looks very wrong, but we know if we're, acute, if we're astute, we notice one thing, and that is, it's right in these two directions. Out of the six directions, of the cube map, these two seem very correct, and they are very correct. Uh, the other ones are obviously messed up. So, it's kind of like close, but no cigar. So, what's the problem? Is it something very complicated that, you know, means that we can't actually use this technique, or is it a very simple thing? Turns out, it's a very simple thing uh, in here. So, I was dividing by Z for the depth, but Obviously, the thing that you divide by is going to depend on, you know, which projection direction you have. So that's also dependent on this maximum here. So I just rewrote it, I added some comments. But yeah, we get the absolute value of x, y, z. Then we find out which is the major direction, which is the direction that corresponds to which face of the shadow map. So we take the major direction out of z, y, and x. And then we're going to multiply that by our projection and also divide by that as the depth. And that will give us the correct result in all directions, not just in the Z direction. We were only getting the Z direction here because we were only dividing by Z, regardless of which cube map face was actually being selected. But before we build, we're actually going to do that, reset the commit, and now we're going to build. Now we're going to run. And we're going to see that the shadow works exactly as you would like. Beautiful, amazing shadowing here. Let's look here. Okay, now we have correct shadowing on this little edge here, which is one of the things I noticed was wrong with the other things. What about here? This is perfect. Beautiful. What about the, uh, the ivy on the pillars? They're all casting their shadows on the pillars. What about here? Don't see any noticeable Peter Panning. All right. Now let's look here. And we're not seeing any sort of self-shadowing artifacts here. Perfect. It works. Now we have slope scale depth biasing with our omnidirectional shadow map. And we're doing it by basically 
in a sense, determining which face of the cube is being sampled and mapping the depth based on that. But we do it in such a way that we don't have to have any branching, which is beautiful. And this is why I named the commit Genius God Bro, because I just thought, damn Chili, you're so, you're so smart. You're so smart. So there you go, there you have it. It's amazing, it's beautiful, it works like a freaking charm, and I love it. I love every little bit of it. Uh, now, what's next? What's next on the plate? Well, there's one more thing I want to tackle before we move on from, from shadows for quite a while. And that is, all right, so we got our slope scale depth biasing working. It's working with the omnidirectionality of our point light. But here's the thing. We still don't have good sampling uh, on it. We don't have good PCF for our omnidirectional shadow map. So, I mean, we have the hardware, PCF, and that gives us a little bit of blurriness, but it's not good enough. I mean, look at this. That's not, that's not good, right? You can still notice these jaggies quite easily. Uh, so we want now to do multi-sampling in, uh, in our pixel shader. We want to sample from the shadow map multiple times and use that to basically blur the edges of the shadows so that uh, it looks cleaner. You don't get, you know, bad stuff like this. And also, it, it'll kind of be like a kind of fake uh, soft shadowing a little bit. But it's not, it's not quite so easy when you're doing it with, um, when you're doing it with an omnidirectional point light. You're sampling into a cube map. Not quite so easy. So we're going to explore that idea in the next video. Uh, but until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button. Helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more Hardware 3D.